test. Welcome to the webinar. You have entered as an organizer and may now speak to any other organizers or panelists. Nobody else in here, right? When you, you are ready to begin the presentation, you press like... the Start Broadcast button on the GoToWebinar control panel to allow all attendees to hear you. This system will notify you once you begin your broadcast. Say something now. I can hear you. Okay, it's because.
The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Thank you everyone for joining uh, WordStream's Gain and Retain Clients. Uh, 10 takeaways from our State of the Agency Industry Report. Really uh, gonna focus today on helping you scale your PPC offering. Uh, and more importantly, you know, gaining uh, clients, but also really focusing on setting the right expectations and retaining them. Uh, to give you a little bit of background on myself, I'll be your presenter today. Uh, my name is Zach Rigo. I run our uh, agency business here at WordStream. I got a little over uh, seven years of PPC experience. We do quite a bit of volume over here, so I've audited over a thousand uh, Google Ads, Bing Ads, and Facebook accounts. And I've really spent the last couple of years uh, dedicated to helping agencies implement tools and systems to grow their client base without having to grow their headcount. So really try to make uh, you all more profitable in everything that you do. I'm a, a huge NC State and Boston sports fan. If you're familiar with uh, Boston sports, we win a bunch of championships. If you're familiar with Tobacco Road, NC State wins very few. So quite the uh, contrast there. Quick overview of what we're focusing on today, again, is gonna be around scaling. Uh, it's five times more expensive to capture a new client than it is to retain an old one. So not only are we going to talk about how to build an offering successfully, uh, but also how to go and find clients that you can set the right expectations with and offer them services that are small one-off charges to make you some money and then get them into a monthly recurring revenue model where you have a great relationship. You are a trusted advisor and can really grow your relationship with the client. Uh, by adding services with them in the long term. And that's actually how we'll be closing out today is not only can we do some work on the front end to, to acquire some revenue, how can we turn that into monthly recurring revenue? And then how can we add on new services to existing clients? So we'll start a little bit by talking about what services agencies are offering in 2019. Uh, obviously, there's an endless amount of uh, offerings with online marketing today. Uh, new players are coming into the market would seem like you know every few weeks or every year and and we really want to look at what services agencies are offering obviously a uh, big player for a very long time search engine optimization uh, web development uh, providing content managing socials obviously really started to take off with with facebook and instagram email marketing display marketing and creative services. We see those really leading the charge for agencies as different offerings you can charge on a monthly recurring basis or a one-off basis to, to grow your revenue. Now within each of these services, there's actually additional fees that you can charge. So we're gonna focus a lot on PPC management and social management, but you know there are, there are sub uh, charges and fees that can be added such as campaign creation. So when you gotta do a, a new build out for a client, uh, implementing conversion tracking, incredibly important to your success, uh, the client's success, and more importantly, allowing you to optimize efficiently. Uh, account audits, we'll spend a little bit of time on today, but we see a lot of agencies charging for that. And then landing page creation and conversion rate optimization. Uh, you can't close out a funnel uh, with online marketing without having great landing pages, forms, and, and ways to capture uh, new leads or sales for your customers. So a really nice service to add on that we'll talk a little bit about at the end and the importance of it. Now, when we look at managing PPC and managing online marketing, we wanna think about what networks you should offer first. These are the ones that are going to have uh, a great level of, of traffic for your customer, uh, reasonable cost per clicks, and allow you to start to segment the funnel for different uh, pieces of their business and different goals. So looking right at the gate at our, our out of the gate at our, at our customer base, we'll see that 99% are actually managing Google ads, uh, either display or search with, with the, the vast majority of them being on search. Uh, obviously that's, a, that's where people are at the bottom of the funnel, they're doing research, they're close to the point of purchase. 44% uh, are also on Bing. Uh, Bing search is incredibly effective dependent upon the client's goals and demographic, but has a really, really nice target audience, a little bit lower uh, cost per click and a little bit less competition. So we see about 44% of our agencies are going and offering Bing as well. The great news is since uh, it's a very similar strategy to Google ads, you can clone a lot of that work over. So added value for your client, not added work for you. 
Um, and then we see Facebook obviously growing uh, year over year and, and their revenues growing with their, their marketing and advertising dollars. And as a part of that, you'll also notice Instagram with 57%. Uh, awesome targeting options, um, you know, really, really nice ads, uh, really seamlessly fit into the timeline that people are scrolling through. So a really nice way to, to use your creative skills, get an ad out there for your client and target a, a great audience. Uh, I know myself and, and my wife are, are constantly purchasing things through Instagram ads. It's probably one of the ones that we interact with and find new brands on uh, more often than anywhere else. So when you think about these networks, you want to think about them as different segments of the funnel. So we'll start with top of the funnel. And what's great about this is if a client has uh, a little bit of budget, they're trying to get their brand name out there, and they have a, a good idea that they might be looking for uh, a certain age range, uh, male or female or certain services they want to offer, you can get it out there on uh, Facebook's news feed and Instagram feed and the cost per clicks are, are reasonable and it's a great way to get a large scale reach and that would be by going with a brand awareness campaign or a reach campaign, you know, setting up some ages and gender targeting and then going in including some interest. So, you know, have, have they been interested in the spa recently or, or are they following any nail salons or uh, manicures or pedicures and, and really get into uh, the interest to be tailored to the customer, give them an offer that you know is going to work, show them an ad that might, uh, if you're targeting, you know, men looking for massages, you can target it with a male in the ad or a female in the ad. If you're targeting females, it's really nice to segment that out to be really specific. Also at the top of the funnel, we can use uh, the Google Display Network. So Facebook came into the market and really pushed Google to uh, enhance their targeting options. And we find a ton of success for our clients actually generating sales and leads by using Google Display Network, where you can not only use it for branding and, and awareness, but you can actually get in front of folks that might be shopping with one of your customer's competitors and really be specific to folks that are interested in uh, the services or offerings your clients are, are putting out there today. Now, as we move down the funnel and go to the middle of the funnel, you can really use Facebook and Instagram for traffic or engagement campaigns or lead generation campaigns. We see lead ads uh, providing a ton of success for our clients. You'll see actually in the carousel that's in the bottom right, uh, the, the person would be scrolling through their news feed, see the Golden Proportions marketing ad, click learn more, and they can submit their email on the next click. So seamless. Uh, advertising that really allows you to acquire a large scale uh, amount of, of emails and contact information and build an email list uh, very quickly and, and at a really reasonable cost. So great way to get that middle of the funnel lead flow for your clients is going and offering lead ads on Facebook and Instagram. And then we get to the bottom of the funnel. This is where I've done my research. I've gone and look at a competitor. Um, I'm about to convert and make a purchase. Uh, at this point, you really want to be advertising your clients on uh, Google search, Bing search. That's when I'm going and, and doing some maybe comparison shopping and also setting up remarketing for them. So setting up remarketing on both uh, Facebook and on Google can allow you to take those uh, low cost clicks you already paid for and add a couple cents on top of it to try to re-engage uh, these customers. And this gives you a great opportunity to show a lot of value to the client because they're going to see repeat transactions. They're going to be able to build lists and segment lists for different services and set timelines. If your clients are offering a service that is a higher dollar, it's imperative that you put up a remarketing ad for them because there will be that comparison shopping. If it's not a fast transactional business, they need to be top of mind and presenting different offerings to their potential customer over and over and over again. Um, I, I use, I try to use remarketing to my advantage. I'll add things to cart and leave and hope that I get a, a, a coupon in the mail, but uh, or, or on a, a page or in my email. So it's really important that you start to think about how you can leverage these ads to, to re-engage folks that already went to your client's sites. So now that you've thought about your offering, you've built out some networks that you wanna go and target, and you've got a plan that you can present to your customers, we really recommend that you pick a vertical you know. So do not try to spread yourself too thin. Again, this is not only about gaining clients, 
at a rapid rate, but it's about retaining them. So pick a vertical you know that you feel comfortable with. Maybe you've offered services to, you know, realtors over and over again or folks in the healthcare space. Uh, we talk to agencies and some of the most successful agencies we work with are laser focused on just real estate, just auto, just dental. Uh, we have one that focuses just on LASIK <laughs> eye care. And they have a ton of success because it's really easy to be scalable and be really knowledgeable in that space. You're speaking the dentist language every time you call them up and you can apply your skills to their business over and over again. And when we talk about the segmentation and the funnels, you can be really repeatable in how you go about launching new campaigns for new customers. So as opposed to uh, being a mile wide and an inch deep, it's really great to go deep, understand the industry through and through, build yourself some easy scalability, some industry expertise, allow you to offer more services because they are repeatable. Obviously, if you know that a, a dentist is going after you know, parents in a certain age range within a certain radius around their office space, and you've had success with that once, you can repeat that over and over and over again. And the other great thing is you don't need to go chasing down testimonials. You can write one or two and have that be in the industry for every other dentist or car dealer you speak with. And then lastly, fewer competitors, right? Every agency can offer online marketing services, but not everyone is offering really focused services in a specific industry. So now we wanna talk about how you can build that awareness that you are an expert in a space, managing certain networks with a really specific strategy. So how can you build awareness? It's tough to pitch business. It is a full-time job pitching business um, and not every agency has a full-time sales staff. So we need to be strategic and have a model that is repeatable. And in order to do that, we really need to make sure that we are finding and focusing on getting clients as efficiently as possible. So this means referrals, and then obviously being able to upsell to those folks that we bring on board. So when we talk about picking a vertical, if you know one dentist, they're constantly going to trade shows and, and speaking with networks and parts of uh, organizations that you can, you can really work your way into. They might not all be local to you because that would be a little bit of a conflict of interest, but you can scale that network really fast. And then obviously upsell. So we talk about getting a client into your door. You know, 20% of our agencies are really growing their business by upselling different services into existing client bases. The last piece is building that awareness by marketing your agency. So you'll notice there's 2.6 billion results if you search for a marketing agency on Google. And there's only 60 million results if you search for a dental marketing agency. So you lower your competition in your marketing efforts dramatically by trying to be more focused and at least building your brand's awareness by being more focused. Incredibly effective, doesn't mean you have to stick with only dental forever, but it allows you to build something that's scalable, repeatable, and incredibly efficient. And then when you can get those testimonials built out, you can start driving that traffic to these pages that tells you know, a dentist that you've had success in that space. You've done it before and you can do it again and you know the recipe for success. So now that you've really identified an offer and found your target market, it's really important that you're asking the right questions. So when you go and you learn about uh, one dentist business, you're gonna understand that they're gonna be pushing hard for certain services. We see implant dentistry is huge. You know, we see the Invisalign, uh, you know, uh, services are going through the roof and folks are offering them more and more offering often. Um, you know, around wedding season, you'll notice that they're offering teeth whitening at a huge scale. So don't just think about this as a way for you to be uh, repeatable, but you're gonna learn these little uh, industry topics that are gonna make you sound like an expert and it's gonna allow you to ask your clients or prospects really great questions to add additional services. So what's their current state and what's their desired state? So you always wanna really know a little bit about their brand and vision. 
you know, and I, I just dropped a couple hints on you, you know, around dentists, but hey, what's that next service in the industry that you're going after? What's that really profitable one that, you know, hey, teeth whitening, you can charge an arm and a leg for it during wedding season. You know, when do we turn on that campaign? When are people coming in? How how soon are they, uh, you know, before their wedding, are they getting their teeth whitened? Um, you really want to ask questions around their business. Don't even focus on their current uh, advertising efforts, just focus on the vision for them for the next six, 12 months. And as you're doing this, you can, you can really gain a lot of knowledge about potential opportunities within their accounts. Does their account structure speak to this? Are they turning on their teeth whitening campaign at, you know, in May and, and really giving that a good chunk of budget over the, the months where people are having weddings? You know, what does success look like to you? So really understanding uh, what their cost per lead can be, what their cost per appointment should be, and and are they getting enough clients or leads in a particular service? So implant dentistry obviously has a really, really high cost for the patient and can be uh, a great entry point for a customer to come in and add a huge lifetime value. So they might only make $5,000 on the, the implant dentistry work, but long term, that might be a ten or fifteen thousand dollar patient for them. So, you really want to ask them what success looks like to them in the short term, and then long term, right? So, how much, if if we can get one child that you're you're helping out, and and parents are having multiple kids, there's great growth opportunity there for for the dentist. So, not only want to understand that, but then you want to understand if their conversion tracking set up correctly to reflect this. The next one, what's your expected time frame for achieving those results? Not every customer's expectations are going to be realistic. In fact, we spend a lot of time and we work with a lot of agencies to help them set benchmarks for their clients and more, more importantly, set realistic timelines. Everything should be in at least 90 day windows. You're not going to be able to turn on that teeth whitening campaign today and have people ringing them tomorrow. It is going to take weeks or, or potentially a month to even start to get some traction so that you can optimize it. Now, what's great about verticalizing is you're going to be able to take some of your successes and launch campaigns that are more successful faster by knowing what works early and setting those um, setting those settings in, into the campaign early on. But you've got to make sure you temper expectations and, and at least start to layer this in when you're doing your initial gap analysis and really starting to understand their business. Last but not least, you know, what does your buyer demographic look like? So we talked a lot about a dentist and I keep using that example, but you know, you want to think about who's getting Invisalign versus who's getting dental implants versus, versus who's getting teeth whitening. And you've got to look at their campaigns when you're doing your, your initial audit and prospecting with them to really see if their settings are even reflective of that. So it's really important that, hey, if they are going after a little bit of an older demographic, it's a great opportunity to clone those campaigns, not only on AdWords, but Bing, and maybe change some settings on, on Facebook and GDN to target that. If they're going after Invisalign, and we know, you know, the target market for Invisalign somewhere in, you know, 15 to, to 25 year olds, great, then we need to make sure that we're segmenting our accounts accordingly and providing exclusions and, and really making sure that their accounts set up for success and limiting the wasted spend that might be there with it. So now that you've asked these questions, the dentist is going to be wondering, hey, what's in it for this agency? They've done a really nice job of asking me questions about my business and gaining information about my business. And uh, every small business owner loves talking about their business and their successes. So now that you've got them to give you all this information that's really just about them, and, and each of these questions that we're putting in with, you know, hey, do the settings match this? Do they have conversion tracking to match this? Um, those are for you, right? Keep those to yourself because what you're going to want to do once you've got them to this point and they've given you the keys to their business and they've given you the keys to their success is engage them with a low cost account audit. You want your customers to be comfortable paying you for your services and your expertise. You just ask them a bunch of questions that give them or give you a ton of insight into their business and probably have really piqued their interest about working with you because most folks are coming in telling them what they can do for the dentist, not asking the dentist what they need to happen to be successful. So how can you efficiently do 
a low cost account audit? Well, you just asked some great questions. You gathered some great information. Now it's important to go and look at the industries and there are tons of free tools out there to leverage benchmarks. We put out a guide uh, every single year that gives you industry benchmarks across search, display, uh, Facebook and Instagram. And we even give you sub industries. So you can go and just start to benchmark their account just on, on basic metrics, click through rate, cost per click, conversion rate, cost per conversion, cost per lead, and, and really just you know give them a quick reflection of, of where they're failing and succeeding and where you think you could take them to the next level. These are free infographics. They're right on wordstream.com, a really nice opportunity for you to, to pull some info from us. Uh, we also have a couple free tools on our website that actually audit the account. So uh, we always recommend gain access to the prospect's account before you try to bring them on as a client. This is going to make your pitch much more valuable. And if they're paying you a small sum of money, um, I would usually say somewhere between two to $500, depending upon the size of the account, to, to do this audit. You're going to come back to them with a ton of great info, but you have to gain access to their AdWords and their Facebook accounts to run an efficient and effective audit. Now, we've got free tools. Our AdWords Performance Grader, our Google Ads Performance Grader, will actually give you a 10-point audit on everything from account structure all the way down to, you know, how's their mobile targeting? You know, are they adding negative keywords or long-tail keywords? And then with our Facebook Ads Grader, We'll even give you intel into audience targeting. Hey, you know, are they using the most effective forms of targeting? Uh, are their ads being overserved? And the great thing about both of these is they're free to you, but they allow you to put together a really nice proposal for the client. And when you're looking into them, you're going to want to dig into some of those underlying services you might be able to offer. So we talked briefly early on about, hey, conversion tracking, right? A lot of small businesses aren't going and spending the time to set this up, but they're investing thousands of dollars a month into Google ads and or, or Facebook ads, and they're not tracking their conversions. So, you know, for a, for a dentist, they, they're definitely going to want appointments. They're going to want either coupon downloads for a service like Invisalign or, or teeth whitening. Uh, they might want phone calls from ads or phone calls from their website. So call tracking is going to be really important. Uh, and then they also have a, you know, a, a appointment portal where people would just book an appointment with them or a consultation with them. So really important that we go and dig into this from the front end, understand the conversion actions, make sure that the repeat rates not doubled up, right? You want it right around one. Um, if they're double counting conversions, that's a flaw. If, if none, uh, if no recent conversions is showing up, something might be broken there. We might want to dig in a little bit deeper. And then we want to also not only look at structure and activity and keyword targeting, but we want to get that underlying settings, right? Are they using network segmentation? So if their strategy is to get, you know, calls and appointments, they should really be a little bit heavier on search than display. You know, more often than not, we want to make sure that search partners is performing well. So you can really provide them some intel around that very quickly. Or you know, a dentist will sometimes be uh, advertising in too broad of a, a range. Most of us are not going to travel more than 10 miles to our dentist or 20 miles to our dentist. And we'll sometimes see that they're targeting a 50 or 60 mile radius, but uh, all of their conversions are really coming from 20 miles or less. So looking at geo-targeting, looking at how far they're uh, targeting around their office and then ad scheduling, you know, hey, should you be advertising on uh, all hours of the day if you're a dentist and no one's there to answer the phone for you? Or should you make sure that you're not advertising on devices during certain hours of the day? So you can see there's device bid adjustments. You can turn them off and turn them on. So doing this network setting and targeting uh, analysis allows you to go back to the dentist and really become almost cost neutral, right? You're probably going to find 20, 30, 40% of their budgets being spent in bad times of the day, on bad devices, in bad geos, and you can really provide them a ton of value very quickly with your account audit. It more than pays for itself, even if they choose not to, uh, to leverage you for any additional services, but now you've become a trusted advisor for them and really been able to offer new services. So the next one we want to look at is, hey, you've, you found opportunity in their account, you found where they're failing against the industry, or where there might be opportunity in underlying settings. You really wanna then come with a plan for an account restructure or a full campaign build out. Sometimes it's better to 
tear down um, and rebuild. Sometimes it's better to build from scratch because it might save, save you uh, even more time and you might have a framework that already works and is in place. And this is uh, really something that we see most of our agencies charging for and charging a pretty hefty sum of money for. So you can charge upwards of a thousand to two thousand dollars for this. I recommend a thousand dollars but the, depending upon the complexity, you know, we usually see somewhere in the, the $750 to $1,000 range for, you know, three campaigns uh, with two to three ad groups per campaign built out with ad extensions um, and, and all the underlying settings. And this is across each network. So, you know, that's kind of the, the normal uh, target we see. If they're asking you to do six 12 campaigns and, and a really large build out, then you can start creeping into that $2,500 charge, maybe a little bit more uh, if they're asking for multiple networks, you know, AdWords and Bing and Facebook. So um, really tailored to the client and their needs, but this is a great way for you to generate a, a significant amount of one-time revenue, build a foundation that is built for success. So on Facebook, you know, you want campaigns to be really targeted towards an objection, uh, objective. You want to have one or two ad sets that are targeting different uh, demographics. I, I mentioned earlier, hey, if you're, if you're targeting males for a certain product or service, you know, you might want to show a male in the ad. If you're targeting females, you might want to show a female in the ad. So the ad sets need to be segmented there. And then you want an A, B, and C variation for each of those ad sets. So three different ads that you're testing that really allow uh, Facebook's algorithms to auto-optimize and allow you to find out which call to action works best without generating any ad fatigue. Ad fatigue being uh, one person on Facebook seeing the same ad four, five, or six times without taking the desired action. That's just, uh, it's, it's the overstate it's welcome. The ad itself is not performing well. You really need to make sure that you're giving enough variations there for Facebook to test auto-optimize and then allow you to pause the worst performer and add a new one to the mix. Now on the AdWords side of things, again, our AdWords performance grader will audit the structure for you, but you, you need to come with a plan for a restructure. So, you know, that might mean that we need, uh, you know, two campaigns, one that's focused on uh, dental implants, one that's focused on Invisalign, uh, different ad groups, hey, maybe one that's really geo-focused. So uh, dental implants in Boston versus a um, little bit more, uh, broader targeting with dental implants and then really tight knit ad groups. So five, six keywords per ad group with an A, B test on the ad sometimes, and you know, an A, B, C variation on the ads there. So keeping these ads and campaigns really focused on both Facebook and AdWords, similar structure from AdWords can be cloned right over to Bing. Then you wanna make sure you're looking at how's their budget being allocated? So whenever you break down an account structure, a really nice rule of thumb is that, that their daily budget should allow them to generate at least 20 clicks a day. If not, you're just never gonna get the volume you need to optimize and really make them successful. So here's an example of a family law firm ad group. Uh, lawyers pay a ton of money on their cost per clicks. This uh, particular client was willing to invest $40 a day which isn't an insignificant monthly budget, but when you look at their average cost per click at $17, they're really only able to get two to two and uh, you know a quarter clicks per day. So really difficult to get any kind of volume or any kind of uh, substance to optimize on. What we really want to see is campaigns that are broken out based on how competitive they are so that each and every campaign can really generate, like I mentioned, right around 20, you know, 10 clicks a day, and in a perfect world, a, a little bit more. But you can see here, we've got that first campaign, it's got $20 a day budget, you know, $1.46 average cost per click. You'll notice as we go farther down, we've got some with a $5 a day budget, but, you know, really a 67 cent cost per click. So we're still able to get a little bit of volume on a daily basis. Really important that you set these expectations early on when you're doing their, their account audits and their account restructures. Because estimating a budget is the most important piece of setting the expectations with the client. They're going to come to you from time to time and say, I'm willing to pay $25 per uh, dental implant lead you get me. And they're going to say that they, they convert, you know, one of those 
you know, a month out of or out of ten leads into a client. So they're they're really, you know, their goal is going to be to get uh, a cost per client of two hundred and fifty dollars. Close rates about fifteen percent, so they're getting two hundred and fifty uh, leads at a fifteen percent close rate. Um, I'm sorry, two hundred and fifty clients at a fifteen percent close rate. That means they need sixteen hundred and seventy-seven leads, and their budget just by doing the basic math of leads times that cost per lead would need to be $41,000. More often than not, that dentist is not coming to you saying, I'm willing to spend $41,000 a month. So you need to back your way into a budget that makes sense for them, that allows them to not only get the lead at the cost per lead necessary, but the volume that they need as well. And more importantly, the volume that you need to get enough traffic to really optimize an account quickly. So now that we've gone through, we've provided them an account audit, we've started to do some restructure, we've really built a lot of equity with the prospect, to try to convert them into monthly recurring revenue. And we've got the framework now with a, a process that we know can be successful, we've set the right expectations, we've done the necessary legwork to feel comfortable bringing them on as a client. We don't want to work with every client that wants to work with us as an agency because your time is incredibly valuable. And we've all heard horror stories about clients that are paying us the least, but taking up the most of our time. And you need to break it off with them and break up with them as a client. So going through this process really weeds out folks that are not willing to invest, not willing to uh, pay you for your services, not willing to uh, be in it for the long haul, meaning, this isn't going to be a two-week turnaround. This is going to be a long-term commitment and agreement between uh, prospect and agency. And doing this allows them to jump over a couple hurdles to show that they're willing to work with you and they're willing to invest in, in their success and give you an opportunity to be successful. So now is a great time to get them into some monthly recurring revenue. And you should really try charging them uh, a percentage of spend or – uh, a flat fee plus a percentage is what I normally recommend. And in most cases, we see a $1,000 flat fee plus a sliding scale on the percentage. So it might be, you know, as high as 10% if they're a little bit of a lower budget spender, you know, scaling on down to 5% if they're, if they're spending, you know, 50, 60, $100,000 a month. But the flat fee plus percentage model allows you to have a consistent income on the flat fee and have you a lot of opportunity for organic growth uh, with their success. So, you know, hey, if they're investing $5,000 a month and you're charging, you know, 5% or 10% of spend and you're getting that $500 a month on top of your flat fee, that's outstanding. But if they're having a lot of success and you've got them a bunch of dental implant clients and they're willing to scale to that, you know, $25 or $40,000 a month budget, that percentage for you grows dramatically. So you're really invested in their success everyone's goals are aligned and as long as they're generating the cost per lead that's necessary and there's uh, impression share available no reason for them to not continue to scale with you and you can see that there's some scale here that people are charging and we see 15 to 20 percent again i like to go with that blended model with the flat fee plus a percentage that gets you somewhere in the 20 percent range on the lower uh, spending clients, and then somewhere in the 10 to 15% range as they start to grow their spend. So now you've converted them into uh, a monthly recurring revenue model. You've made some flat fees on the front end. You've got a great account structure that you've built out with a plan that's aligned around their brand, their customer base, and their services. It's incredibly important to set up a client communication cadence. You want to have a plan to talk to them before they pick up the phone and talk to you. We want to be proactive, not reactive. There is nothing worse than getting a call from a client that uh, is unexpected. That usually means there's a problem. So we want to make sure that we put 30 minutes on their calendar twice a month for the same day and time to have a call. They might miss it from time to time, but you should really make it a point to be available for those calls every other week. They should also expect to see a, a report from you that is consistent, reporting on key metrics that are outlined uh, from the get-go on, on setting up this monthly recurring model with them. And you should create a task list so that they know what is going on every week for the next two weeks before they speak with you again. 
this this task list should be shared. Uh, I really like to have it be in, in kind of a Google Doc form or something that allows for both of you to log in and, and see how things are moving along and what's being worked on. But really, this allows you to communicate with the client without having to pick up the phone or having them to pick up the phone. During this call, you want to review that consistent bi-weekly reporting. You want to update them on the previous week's tasks, what you completed, what's still ongoing. You want to ask for any upcoming changes. So really plan, you know, is a, is a dentist going to be out? You know, do you have a vacation coming up? Should we turn off any campaigns or services that, um, you know, profitability might have changed on or turn up the budget if Invisalign's running a special for you this month? Uh, so really important that you stay abreast to any changes coming up in their business. Put all of that into your task list for the coming weeks. Make sure that you've got your running list updated. And then present a strategy for potential expansion. So as you become this trusted advisor, every week you should come with a new opportunity. So it might be, hey, we started with search. We are doing outstanding. We are achieving the goals. My recommendation is we clone uh, the dental implant campaigns over to Bing. You know, that would be a great kind of month one, month two expansion opportunity for you. Get a little bit more spend under management on a different network. Uh, you can charge them for the campaign creation. Again, they're used to paying you for that. Um, and you've built a, a new network to go after for them. It expands their reach. We know that the campaign's already profitable on face on, I'm sorry, on Google search. Let's clone that over. So now that we've built the service, we've built the offering, we've built the campaigns, we've set up a cadence with the customer. We've bringing them, we've brought them additional strategies. We want to start thinking about additional services we can provide them that allow them to scale and allow us to scale. So for the case of, of this conversation, we're going to focus on, hey, landing page creation and conversion rate optimization. So you, you might find some leaky points in the funnel now that you've created and driven all this great traffic and you've been optimizing it for a month or so. Um, now we're going to find some holes in that funnel that we want to help the client plug up and, and we're going to help you build a case to do that. So Obviously, there are a bunch of other things we could charge for here, but we're going to focus on landing page and conversion rate. So what is a good conversion rate? Uh, we did an analysis of 25,000 uh, AdWords accounts in, in our uh, systems and looked at just conversion rate and, and really tried to segment them. So the average across everybody was 2.35. The top 25% were about 2x that. And the top 10% were... 5x that which is uh, incredible right that's that's kind of that unicorn status that that everyone's achieving and striving to get there but um you know what does it take to really get there so the pitch for you is hey you know you've got your home page you've got your website we're sending traffic there we're getting a great conversion rate we're beating the the average of 2.35 percent but hey to get to that top 25 percent We've got to go and build some testing. We've got to do some landing page build outs. We've got to get some conversion rate optimization built in. So what did we find when we started to look at that top 25%? Well, instead of having just one page they were sending traffic to, they were testing four for every single campaign. That top 10%, they were testing 10. So really they were putting in the effort and finding ways to quickly build a landing page, duplicate it, and create a test. That might be as simple as changing the color of the button. We found that, you know, orange works really well for us at WordStream. Uh, it might be blue for your client. It might be it might be that submit works better than contact us. But these small little tests allow you as an agency to offer them a great service, be nimble, and really increase the impact on their business based on those great campaigns you built out for them. So we want to help get you and your clients that unicorn status. But what kind of impact can this have? So we're not going to go crazy. We're not going to go to the unicorn status quite yet because that would be a lot of work for you all to build 10 pages out for every client on every campaign. So we're going to stick with that, uh, that top 25%. So let's just say there's a scenario here where they're investing 5,000 per month they're getting 961 folks to their website. You know, they got a 3.31 or 3.3% conversion rate. They're getting 32 leads per month. This is actually the industry average for uh, the dentist office is what we used here. Um, closing percentage is 20%. This dentist is awesome. When he gets them for that free consultation, he's getting sales out of it. So, hey, they're investing $5,000 per month. They're getting 6.4 uh, sales per month. 
$4,000 average selling price for that dental implants blended with the Invisalign revenue. You know, they're getting $25,000, you know, back from, from this $5,000 investment, a 5X ROAS. That's amazing, right? That's really, really successful for the, the dentist and you're really providing a great service. But if you could get them to invest in something like landing page creation or conversion rate optimization, and you can do it efficiently with a tool or, or you have a, a web dev service where you're building these out, you could get their conversion rate to double, to 6.6. .6. That's 64 leads. They're going to be doing a ton of those free consultations. Their closing percentage stays right there at, at 20%. Now they're getting $51,000 in revenue every month. That is incredible success. And again, you've more than paid for yourself. So it's not just you coming to the table with, with ways for you to generate more money. But if you come with statistics and you come prepared uh, with a really nice solid pitch of success that you've had with other dentists that you've done this for, where again, we're, we're building a repeatable and scalable service here, you're gonna be able to duplicate this over and over and come with those testimonials for each and every service you're providing. Now, a little bit of a plug. I mean, we want to be your partner in agency growth. So everything we talked about here today, you can do on your own. There is no doubt about it. Um, but we've built tools around a lot of it because we've spent so much time working with and, and trying to solve problems for agencies. I'm literally working you know, 50, 60 hours a week with that one uh, goal in mind so that you can impact as many small businesses as possible. And we've got everything from account audit tools built into our software that are white labeled for you to provide those auditing services. We've got account restructure tools. We've got uh, account optimization tools. We've got reporting tools. And we've got landing page and conversion rate optimization tools. Um, and all of that's built into a package for agencies. And, and uh, in our partnership with AAF, we've done a really nice job of packaging them together uh, with a really uh, great discounted offer for you all. Um, you can get discounts on uh, our software, on our consulting. We're actually going to throw in some of the account audit tools included in the package for you. Those are usually an additional charge. Uh, and you get training and support included. So you get to work with someone here to really learn the different networks. So if you're really experienced in Facebook but don't feel really comfortable going to your clients and offering, you know, AdWords or Bing, we can coach you up on that or vice versa. Uh, and you'll notice, you know, Jim, one of our one of our great customers who's been to our office a bunch, he helps drive some of the vision of our product for us. Um, we open new opportunities for him, and that's a really common story for our client base is opening those new opportunities where a lot of our clients are offering web dev services or creative services, and now they've entered into AdWords, Facebook, and Bing management, and they've built a really nice monthly recurring revenue stream from that, um, and they've got multiple entry points on where they can start to work with a customer and then grow their model there. So we're gonna put up a poll. Um, we love to provide free account audits and consultations for uh, every webinar attendee. We run webinars you know, all day, every day here at WordStream. And uh, we see that folks really enjoy getting a free account audit. So whether it's for your marketing account or um, it's for one of your, uh, your prospects, we're happy to help you out with it. And we're happy to run you through some of these tools that we talked about here today to show you how efficient we can make you in that model. We're gonna give you a couple minutes to fill that out. We'd love to chat with all of you. And uh, we certainly appreciate you hopping on and, and running through this presentation here today. Thank you so much for your time.